So recently, I have been playing a lot of traditional roguelike games. And by traditional roguelikes, I don't mean games like Hades or like Darkest Dungeons. I mean like actual old school tile based traditional roguelikes. Like games like the original Rogue, Caves of Kud, Rift Wizard, um, Tome. Uh, I, I don't know. There's a lot of traditional roguelike games out there that I've been playing, and I've been having a lot of fun with them. So I decided to make my own traditional roguelike in Godot called Path to Slime. Yes, that's right. I made a traditional roguelike game based on myself. I know. I'm such a cool person that I made a game based on myself. So basically, in this video, I'm gonna just be playing the, the roguelike game that I made and just showing it off I guess because I wanted to make a video on the game and kind of like I don't know promote it I guess uh, it's not that good of a game honestly I just wanted to show it if you are interested in the game that I made though it's uh there's a link there's gonna be a link in the description so uh feel free to press that download it and give it a try let me know what you think and I'm just gonna be playing the game today. And please bear in mind, I am very new to game development in general, so I'm not very good at like UI and stuff. I know this vi looks very ugly, but so far there are three buttons. Uh, there's the play, guide, and quit. Obviously, you can probably guess what quit does. And the guide button basically gives us uh, a short description of uh, all the mechanics and stuff that you can do. I'm not gonna read this, there's quite a lot of words and dialogue uh but yeah i'm gonna just gonna get into the game so when you start the game you can pick from one of three classes my favorite class to start with is speedy uh all of the classes like give you different starting stats and abilities but like they aren't too important so just pick any of the classes honestly i'm gonna go with speedy for now though and as you can tell the art isn't great this was my like first ever game made in godot so I didn't want to go like full artsy mode. And plus I'm not capable of drawing anything that's really well made, but I tried, okay? This is like my best I could do. And here's the main character, Mr. Stickman here. And uh, yes, here are my stats. These are the beginning stats that I have, and uh, I'm not gonna quit. Since this is a traditional roguelike, I did not implement any saving mechanics because it's a traditional roguelike, and totally not because I do not know how to add saving yet. Basically, yeah, I'm just gonna play this game. This is a traditional roguelike, everything is tile based. And as you can see here, here's our first enemy. This is the zombie. Uh, if you look at the bottom left, there's moves. These are the amount of moves I can make before time passes. So if I have two moves, I can move twice before the enemy moves. And yeah, using this, I can like strategically plan out how I attack and fight, basically. If you start with a different class, you're gonna have a different amount of moves. Because I start with the speedy class, I have two max moves. The other classes will only have one moves to start. Uh, but don't worry, if you didn't pick speedy, you can still increase the amount of moves you have by increasing your speed stat. And you can increase your stats later on when you level up. Like, like right now, right now, for example. Um, when you level up, once you get enough experience by killing enemies, you can level up. And uh, there's attack, defense, and speed. Ma th these are pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to explain this shit. The only thing I need to explain is probably speed. Every 20 stats that you put into speed, you will gain an extra move. So uh, it's wor it's worth investing in speed, basically. Speed is worth investing in if you want more moves. And trust me, you're gonna want a lot of moves because later on, enemies are gonna have uh, a lot more moves as well. Because for now, the, this is only the beginning level, so um, all enemies only move once per turn. And the player can move however much they want, depending on their speed stat, of course. Um, also, I also forgot to mention, I'm getting way ahead of myself right now. Um, I bought armor just now, yes. You can buy armor in this game. And armor will give you stat increases. So, armor is quite important. Very important, I do you say so. I, I'm pretty sure it's not possible to get very far without uh, without armor. So you can buy armor, you can increase your stats, basically. And there's also notes as well. There's lore in this game. I'm not going to read out all the lore. There is quite a bit of notes in my game. 
I'm pretty sure there's like 50 notes in my game. Like, there is lore in my game. I actually added lore of this game. I know, my dumb little game has lore. But it does, and the, uh, I'll, I'll give you a short version of the lore. Basically, the slime in this game is God. I made myself a fucking God in this game. I am that much of a narcissist. I made myself as a God. And basically, I become a religion. I am now a religion in the world of my game. Yes, uh, if you guys want to know more about the lore, I do suggest you play it yourself. Haha. <laughs> yes, I am, uh... Advertising my shitty game, yes. Uh, yeah, basically, I am basically a god in this game. And uh, if you see the this thing that I've been collecting, these are slime balls. Yes, they are my balls. They are the main currency of my game. My balls are the currency of the game. You can use these slime balls at the vending machines, like this, for example. Uh, I'm just going to show you. You can buy spells. You can expand your healing pool. You can buy potions. You can buy armor. So, uh, slime balls are good. You want more of them because you can buy shit. And there's also a lot of spells. There are 18 different spells in this game, which is quite a bit for me. So, uh, I'm going to get that. I have a lot of spells. I have the scramble, freezing touch. These are pretty simple. I don't have anything too groundbreaking for spells. My spells are pretty basic, I do say so myself. And yeah, I'm just uh, going around killing enemies because uh, I want to level up as much as possible. Because the game, my game is pretty difficult. I'm not, I'm not very good at balancing the game itself. I'm not very good, so it's quite difficult. If you're not like op, if you're not somewhat optimized with your stats, you're gonna die pretty quickly later on. And also, as you can tell just now, I found a key and I used this key on this portal thing right here. And that's how you move on to the next level. Basically, it's this game is consisted of many levels and many different areas. Every single level has a key and a portal. You're gonna have to find the key to get to the portal and use the portal. And yeah, and as you can see here, this is, um, a boss, a mini boss that I made it. This guy's the amalgamate. Uh, each boss has a lot more health than the average enemy and does more damage, and some of them have like their own special stats. This guy is gonna chase me, and I'm gonna try to kill it. He's I killed him pretty easily, honestly. That was kind of disappointing. But, uh, if you're new to the game, then, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, the bosses can kill you really quickly. The reason why I killed him so quickly was because I was prepared. I was prepared, and it couldn't hit me. But if it manages to land a hit on you, it can poison you. Which is not very good, as you can probably already guess. Even though I make this look very easy, it's a lot more difficult when, uh, when you don't know what you're doing. Is what I'll say. Is what I'll say, I guess. Also, another thing about this game is that you get lost very easily. As you can tell, everything is fucking dark. There's like dynamic lighting and stuff. So, uh, it's very easy to get lost. Like, it's hard. Like, there has been times where I spent literally an hour looking for either the key or the portal to move on. And it's not very fun. Trust me. It's not very fun to be lost. Uh, I'm just gonna move on. So this is the second area of my game. As you can tell, uh, this is stage three, but this is the second area. Basically, there are- there's like every area has two levels in it, basically. Kinda- it's- it's not too complicated, but I'm not very good at explaining. And here is when things get difficult. The bees. The- the bee is one of the most difficult early game uh, enemies. As you can tell, it applied four poison to me, and it can move twice as well. So just like me, it has a higher speed stat, so it can move multiple times. You're gonna have to consider this when you're playing. It gets quite difficult when uh, enemies also move multiple times. The bear only moves once, but um, it has higher chase stat. There's also a hidden chase mechanic as well where Enemies only chase you when they're looking at you, but if they're already chasing after you and they no longer see you, there's a chance that they will continue to chase after you. The bears have a higher chase stat, basically. They also have a higher HP and attack damage as well. Um, there's also these bushes that you can hide inside of. You can also take a piss in here, I guess, since no one can see you. 
And you uh, basically, if you made it to this level, you want to be careful. Because the bears are very deadly. They will absolutely wreck you if you're not careful. I have ended many runs to these bears. I mean, to these bees. The bees and the bears, I guess. They're very... Just like that. <laughs> yes, I was busy commentating, and I wasn't paying attention there, and I died. Basically, that was a mixture of poison and getting slapped in the face by the bee's stinger. And I died. So now I retry. And since this is a roguelike, there is permadeath and there is no meta progression. If you die, you reset with absolutely nothing. You're gonna have to play very carefully. I did have a bit of a Souls-like inspiration. Like, it's not very, like, noticeable, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but... There is a bit of Souls-like Dark Souls inspiration. Like, the lore is kind of Souls-y, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word. But there is a bit of Souls-y inspiration. Where, like, you actually have to learn how the enemy moves. You have to learn how many moves the enemy has. And once you learn it, it becomes pretty... I wouldn't say easy, but much more predictable if you know how the enemy moves. Like, for example, you know, it, once you've died enough time to the bees, you know that the bees move twice and that the bees will poison you. So the next time that you fight the bees, you're going to approach it differently than if you were approaching it for the first time. And that was kind of my goal of the game. I wanted uh, to create um, a roguelike that you learn-ish. I don't know if it's very good at what I'm trying to do, but that's what, what, that's what I kind of was trying to do, where uh, you do kind of learn. I, I, as you can tell, I still am pretty new to this whole game development thing. I'm not a, I'm not a professional game developer, so I do apologize if it is very scuffed and uh, amateurish. But uh, I did try my best for this game. I spent a lot of time making this game. Another thing I forgot to mention was uh, the more things that you buy the, for the spells and for the armor, the more you buy, the, the more expensive it costs. So, for example, if you buy a piece of armor five times in a row, it's going to become more expensive than if you bought it for the first time. So you're also gonna have to manage like when do you want to like buy armor and stuff but the thing is the armor quality is also based on how expensive it is so the more ex if, for example if you spent 50 slime balls to buy one piece of armor it's gonna be higher quality than if you spent one slime ball on that armor piece so it's like risk reward do you want to save up for a cheaper armor piece in the future or do you want to spend do you, or do you want to spend slime balls now and like have a more ex I, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying man I cannot explain this I'm not very good at explaining I'm trying to explain this to the best of my abilities but like it's hard when I'm also trying to focus on the game uh basically buy more it become more expensive it become more expensive armor good that's basically as simple as I can say it uh, yeah, as you can t I don't- honestly, sometimes I don't even know how I did this. Like, I can barely explain my own game. Yeah, I was able to code it. I was able to code my own game, but I can't fucking explain it for some reason, which is weird. But, tr trust- I, I, I know. Uh, trust me, I did make this game myself. I did not cheat. I did not use chat GPT. I made this entire game myself. And here is my, uh, other boss, uh, the living ghost. Um, this guy is the other boss that you can encounter in the game. Every single, like, area has two different bosses that can spawn. For the first area, you saw the living amalgamate from earlier, and now the living ghost. So, uh, yeah, you can encounter different types of bosses. And there's also a dodge stat as well, so as you can see, my attacks are missing. It's not doing any damage because it's a ghost, and the ghosts have higher dodge stats. So as you're playing, you're gonna have to like kind of keep a mental note of what enemies can like dodge what. Like some enemies have a higher dodge stat than others, and you won't know that. So you're just gonna have to keep playing over and over until like you can kind of like guess what the stats are. Like the, the zombies you almost never miss. Like you can miss, but you almost never do. But the ghosts, you, you will probably miss like 50% of the time.
that is something you want to keep in mind while you're playing if you ever do play that is like I i'm talking about this as if it's an actual game that people are gonna play when in actuality no one's probably gonna play this and i'm literally explaining this to nobody but uh yeah i put a lot of work and passion into this okay i, I wanna i wanna talk about it even if nobody is gonna play it and as of right now there aren't that many enemies like each er each area only has two variants of enemies like this like this village this is the village area by the way um there are only ghosts and zombies so uh not a lot of enemy variety but it's not a huge game i wanted uh, my game to be relatively simple i didn't want to be too overly ambitious or anything because overly ambitious will sometimes end up in failure so uh, i wanted to keep my vision small also the sound effects and music in this game were made by me as well i am quite proud of it i'm quite proud of how it sounds i'm not usually much of a sound guy so I was quite proud when I uh, when I uh, made the music myself. I made the music myself, so I am quite proud. And I just realized I have not been using any of my spells. This is something that uh, ends up killing me a lot. I found out that when I whenever I play this game, I always not use. I always like. I always reserve my spells for some reason. Like spells have cooldowns. I'm like. Okay, spells have cooldowns. I only need to use spells when I need it. And then I end up never using it. And because of that, I die. Like, there was this one time where I was surrounded by enemies. And I had the perfect spell to kill the most of them in one attack. And then I'm like, nah. I'm just not gonna use a spell. I'm just gonna, like, run away or attack. And because of that, I ended up dying. I, I'm like a hoarder. I'm a hoarder. What is what else? I'm a hoarder. I hoard spells, and I never use it. Like, it makes no sense, even though I know I should use the spells. I, I end up never using it. So, uh, something I gotta do is use my spells more often. And I need to use my spells more often, because I want to showcase it to you guys. And to the viewer, if there is any viewers, that is. But, yeah. Uh, I think I found the portal earlier. I gotta use this key on the portal. Uh, there it is. Okay, back onto the second area again. Second area again, let's go. And with my spells, I can handle the bees from afar. I, uh, that's good. And as you can tell here, I uh, can buy different types of armor. Each area has higher quality armor. And different armor sprites as well. And yeah, I put a lot of time into drawing the, the, the armor and shit. Yeah, I'm just gonna collect a bunch of my balls. I don't know why I have so many balls. Who keeps, like, stealing my balls and, like, releasing them to the wild? Also, there's bleed as well. Bleed basically means that if you if your bleed status reaches the same amount as your max HP, uh, your health will immediately drop to 1. If you're, that is, if you're bleeding to the same amount as your max HP. And, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to be very careful with bleed. Bleed has no- oh, fuck, um... I was gonna say something, but then I immediately get attacked by that. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to be careful here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw them all in a straight line so that I can like beam blast them all. Beam blast. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. There we go. Okay, this is actually going pretty well. This is actually going pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna increase my max HP because I do not want to fucking die. Um, dying would be very sad. I end up dying a lot in this game. I, I have died hundreds of times in my own game. It's quite sad. I do not have any playtesters, so I end up playing the game myself, and because of that, I swear to god, I think I've spent more time playing my game than I have, like, spent, like, developing it itself. Which is... Okay, um, I am very close to dying. Uh... Okay. Another thing is that you can press space to skip time, basically. You can press space to wait. And doing that will allow enemies to move towards you. Instead of actually you having to go to them. And that is very useful when fighting against enemies that move multiple times. So I can let enemies come to me instead of going to them. I suggest using space a lot. Space is going to be very, very fucking useful. So, if you are if you are going to play the game, use space. Space very important. 
Oh, I think another thing I forgot to mention is that enemies have different ranges as well. Like, some enemies can attack from afar. Some enemies can attack from further away than some enemies. Like, for example, the bees can attack from two block spaces. While bears can only attack from one block spaces. So, you also have to consider that as well. I, am, I added quite a lot of mechanics to my game. Which is, uh... Something I'm proud of. I thought the game would be a lot more simpler when I first imagined it, but I ended up adding quite a bit of mechanics to it. Which, uh, like I said, I am quite proud of. Like, I broke up my game into lots of different pieces and mechanics, and then combined them all into one game, you know? And I think now is a good time to move on to the next area. Yeah, basically, you just gotta be careful, you gotta play well. And everything should be good, I guess, I think, I suppose. And now I am fully decked out in armor now, which is nice. I am fully decked out. My stats are quite good right now, but uh, I can't be too overly confident yet because enemies become quite strong later on. Oh shit. And a moment of carelessness can still kill me very easily. Like, no matter what my defense stat is, poison can still utterly wreck me. So yeah, never become too overly confident, that is what I will say. No matter how strong you think you are, there's probably gonna be a way that you can die. You wanna be careful, and you wanna be playing quite slowly. I say you should probably play slowly as I move very quickly. I, I'm like, oh yeah, you should move very slowly, you should be careful. Then here I am moving like a psychopath, fucking moving at the speed of sound. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna drink my potion, yeah. I don't know if I talked about my heal pool yet. My healing mechanic is basically you pick up a potion or something. And then your heal pool value goes up. And you can use the heal pool to heal, basically. It's not too, too complicated. Alright, I'm gonna... Wait, what level is this? This is stage 4. So every 2 levels is when the boss spawns, basically. There is a boss every 2 levels. So as you can tell, right there, that is a boss. Grizz. This guy is Grizz. You should probably be careful of him. I don't remember what his attack range is. I'm pretty sure his attack range is 1. So I can attack him several times and then move away. There we go. Killed the boss. It, it was pretty easy, but I, I have died a couple times with these guys. Always gotta be careful. Always gotta be fucking careful, you know? I am quite strong for the area I'm at right now, so it's not too difficult. But uh, I gotta be careful. Carelessness is my biggest we Oh, fucking- I accidentally pressed space by accident. And as you can tell, he did a shit ton of damage to me. That was a critical hit. You can tell when enemies do critical hits based on the sound effect that they make when they attack you. And, uh, critical hits do a lot of damage. Like, if you're not prepared, some critical hits can do hundreds of damage. And you- and you gotta find, you gotta remember to combat it. Like, there are several ways you can, like, fight against critical hits. One, you can choose to not get hit. Like, if you play carefully, you can probably do a no-hit run. Or, you can stock up on armor and increase your defense as high as possible. So that even with critical hits, they won't do that much damage. There are several different ways you can, like, go about it. So there are like, for every enemies, like, there, I made sure to add like, some variety, like different ways you can approach situations, like, you can do a defensive build where you can just like take, just tank everything. Or you can do like, a mobility build, and like an agility build where you can try to no hit everything. Which is quite hard, because you have to play very carefully. It is all viable, all viable uh, strats to play this game. Even though I've mostly done speed builds myself, because I like going fast. <laughs> um, also, moving on to the next area. And we're in the next area. This is the castles. The castle. The uh, ruined castle. Holy fuck! What the fuck just happened? Oh my god. I Bro, my game is bullshit. Okay, you know, I under- Okay, I know what happened. I know what happened. I, I was about to say my game is bullshit, but I know what happened. Basically, one of the enemies in this game is the Mannequin Maid. The Mannequin Maid doesn't do a lot of damage, but it can move like five times per turn. 
So it attacked me five times in a row. I, I didn't realize it was there because it was too dark. Like the corridor, like the light of the corridor kind of blocked the room. So I couldn't see inside of it. And the mannequin maid came out of nowhere, attacked me five fucking times or so. I don't remember if it was five or four. It moves up multiple times. It fucking absolutely annihilated me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's quite difficult to play a no-hit build because of, like, lighting. Dynamic lighting is something you have to consider very carefully. Uh, you have to very carefully consider the lighting. Because, obviously, if you can't see it, can't see the room, there's obviously going to be very difficult to know what's there. Uh, there is a spell called, um, what's it called? Uh, illumination that allows you to see through walls and to, like, see everything. So, I do recommend getting that. Um, that is like one of the most OP spells in the game, is the Illumination spell. It doesn't do any damage, it doesn't like actually change anything, but it allows you to see everything on your screen. It makes all the black stuff go away. So, yeah. Uh, if you can get the Illumination spell, if it ever shows up, I recommend getting the Illumination spell. I've been trying to get that the entire time last run. But I could not get it, so, uh... And I'm trapped! Um, great. Uh, I'm just gonna kill that guy. Also, another thing is that if you use spells, spells will never miss. So, I do recommend using spells if you're, like, trapped or something. Uh, basically, yeah, I died, and so I'm just gonna have to play through the game again, I guess. I mean, that is what roguelikes are. Just permadeath, and you die over and over. That's the appeal of roguelikes. If you don't like dying and having to restart, then uh, I guess my game isn't for you. But um, yeah, uh, you die a lot in my game. My game is something that you die a lot. It's uh, My game is a mixture of being careful, knowing what you're doing, and luck. It's a mixture of all three. Because if you're unlucky, no matter how careful you are, and no matter how good you are at the game, you're still gonna die. But no matter how lucky you are, if you're not careful, you're gonna get fucking killed by some stupid random bullshit like the mannequin made last time. And yeah, so you're gonna be careful, you're gonna have to know what you're fucking doing, and you're gonna need to be lucky. So you're gonna have to be- you're just gonna have to hope that you're lucky, man. You're just gonna have to hope you're lucky. There's nothing you can do about luck. It's all RNG, or you can pray to RNGesus, I guess, but... Honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna beat this game uh, like in this video because my game it's quite rare for me to make it to the last area. I don't think I've ever okay. I don't think I've ever beaten my own game legitimately. I have beaten my game using cheats and stuff because like I'm a game developer. I have to like test my game. Like I have to play test it somehow, you know. And uh, I don't think I've ever beaten my game without using some sort of cheats. Like I have beaten my game, obviously, because like how else would I know that's beatable? But I don't. Okay, this is what I was talking about earlier—the illumination spell. This is a great spell, by the way. This is a great spell. You can illuminate the entire world. Yeah, anyways, what was I saying again? I forgot. Um, I was talking about, uh, game development, right, right, okay. I don't think I've ever been in my game legitimately. Like, without any, like, external game dev cheats. I have been in it, just like, you know, not legitimately, so... It is beatable, Tr I, like, believe me, it is beatable. I have done it before, so I have tested it. Theoretically, it is possible. It's just that I have not beaten it myself before, so who knows? If you play this game, you might be the first person in the world to ever beat this game. And that is an incentive as to why you should play this game, by the way. But despite what I said earlier, I did make it to the final area before. I made it to the final area of my game. I just died because I was fucking careless. So yeah, it should be possible. It, it should definitely be possible to beat the game. Uh, I can use my fourth bolt again. There we go. I leveled up. There we go. That wasn't too difficult. First area isn't too difficult, as you can tell. It's like the beginner area. This is like you learning about the game's mechanics. It's not too difficult. It's very, very, like, simple. But make no mistake. You can still die. It's just not very high risk. Uh, I'm also gonna wait for my illumination spell to wear off so I can use it. 
I'm basically just gonna rely on my illumination spell to see from now on. The illumination spell is just so fucking good. It is so fucking good, man. Illumination spell is like top tier. Being able to fucking see is so good. Like if you've seen any of my streams, you'll know that I have horrible sense of direction. My sense of direction is on par with Zoro's. I have gotten lost on a straight fucking path before. So uh, I need some like navigational aid. So like fucking illumination spell is like god like no legitimately I made this spell for myself. Not because it was unbalanced, not because like other people suggested. I literally made it just for myself. Just so I could have a chance of beating this game, I made it for myself. This game was made for the sole purpose of me being able to find my way without getting lost. So yeah, that is, uh, that's a bit of, uh, I guess a little fun fact there, I guess. There we go. Ow, god, that guy crit me just now. That guy fucking crit me. That is not very pleasant. You are gonna want to be careful with crits and stuff. Like, ideally, you don't want enemy, you don't want any enemies to crit you. Or hit you in general. So you're gonna, in order to lower the chances of you being crit, you're gonna also want to lower the amount of times you get hit in general. And that's probably the best way to avoid getting crit. The best way to avoid getting crit is to not get hit, you know? But unless you're doing like a defensive, a, def uh, a defensive tank build, that's a different story. Ow, God, I got fucking crit again. Holy shit. I am glad that I have pretty high defense. High defense is good when you're fighting against uh, against things that can crit you out. Where is the fucking key? Where is the key? I've been wandering this forest for- Ow, jeez. Holy fucking, fucking hell, man. I got like crit like three times in a row. This is why you have to be careful, like I'm saying. I let myself get crit out three times, which is not ideal. Um, you're gonna want to lower the amount of times you get crit as much as possible Because you are playing with fire if you if you get hit a lot Ow, Jesus Christ, why am I playing this game so quickly? I literally like earlier. I was literally like yeah, you should play slowly You gotta be careful and here. I am just like moving around like so fucking quickly not bothering to check behind trees or anything like, Jesus fucking Christ, I told myself that I'd be careful, but I'm not playing carefully at all. Holy fuck, I'm going against what I said earlier. Like, this is why nobody takes me seriously. I'm like, yeah, I gotta play carefully. And then I proceed not to play carefully. I'm gonna move on to the next level. This area again. This time, I can actually see the mannequin made. It, okay, let me, I don't remember how many times it moves, let me count. One, two, three. Okay, it moves only three times, so it's not too deadly. There is an enemy later on called the Crack Goblin that does move like six times in a row. And I'm just going to use my Force Bolt here. Another thing with spells is you can attack enemies behind walls. So, uh, use that to your advantage if you can. Uh, just, yeah. Okay. And when you're playing this game, you're going to have to learn how to bait enemies. Like... You're gonna, if you're, if you're, an enemy is a certain distance away from you and you can't make it to it in time to kill it, you're gonna want to learn to like bait it towards you. Basically, you have to become really good at baiting. You have to become a master baiter. Uh, yeah, lore. I don't know why I'm bringing up these lore notes. If you guys want to read the lore notes, feel free to play the game and read them yourself. Man, my lore is pretty simple. The lore is actually not complicated. It's pretty simple. It's basically just like a dude. <laughs> That's a bit of an over simpli simplification, but basically there's a king guy where uh, his wife died. And basically he wants to revive his wife, basically. So he does evil experiments on people, which is basically the premise of the entire first area. You know, in the first area, there were a bunch of zombies and ghosts. That was because the king was experimenting on them, trying to turn them alive again. And the second area is that is the king experimenting on animals, making them stronger. 
And yeah, if, if you want to know the lore about the enemies in the areas, you can read the notes if you want. You can read the notes, you can get the lore and stuff, yada yada. I'm... it's fairly simple. It's nothing too groundbreaking. And the lore is somewhat like Soulsy as well. It's kind of Dark Souls vibes. It gives me dark... like, I, I didn't have Dark Souls in mind when I made the notes and made the lore itself. But in hindsight, it does feel like kind of Dark Soulsy with how uh, it's structured and stuff. Medical report. There has been a case of a man who tried to sleep with one of the mannequin maids. However, in the process of creating a hole in its wooden body, the mannequin maid became aggressive and severed the man's genitals. Help came immediately after his screams were heard, so he survived, but he was severely bleeding out. He is still in medical care, but he has completely lost his reproductive abilities. Still, it is better that than if you had lost his life. Yeah, this dungeon is quite big. Uh, the hallways and the rooms are generated randomly, so I get lost very easily. One thing I want to say is that I'm very proud of my room generation. Like, um, fucking, like, the dungeon, like, the roguelike room generation is something that I spent a lot of time researching. Like, every single area so far, like, the fucking village area, the forest, and this castle, they all have different room generations and level generations. I had to research, like, five different, like, methods for generating rooms and stuff, like, like, there was, like, I, I don't remember what the names are called, like, there is, like, cellular automation or automata or something for, like, the fucking one of my room generations. Like, I had to research a lot of room generations and different types of ways to randomly and procedurally generate rooms. Like, I'm using fancy fucking words here. That's how you know it's complicated. The fact that I'm using fucking complicated words like procedural generation and cellular automation or whatever means i am using fancy pantsy algorithms here yeah like i had to learn what the fucking a star map was an a star gra grid or graph or whatever to like path five okay uh by the way this is the boss the queen holy fucking shit what what wait 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 a s what Okay, I'm gonna check my source code. I Jesus fucking Christ, did it do 200 damage to me? I was at full health, and it brought me to negative... Bro, who the fuck made this game? I demand to meet the one who made this fucking bullshit ass game. Okay, wait, let me, and then I'm gonna check the code. I'm gonna check the fucking code. I think he crit me, I think. I think it crit me, and it did 200 damage. I mean, it was to be fair it is my fault that i let myself get hit because i could have easily avoided that if i was playing carefully but still doing 200 damage is quite a lot i'm gonna check okay what what the fuck okay normally it does a hundred damage normally without critting when it does manages to crit you it does 300 damage Okay, um, okay, I, I mean, I guess that was my fault, like, I could've, this is when bosses, like, bosses so far have been very easy, this is when bosses actually become difficult. It's not even that difficult, because if I was actually playing carefully, I could've killed it without taking any damage. So yeah, I, I, I can think of different ways I could've done that better. I, because I, I saw the enemy, I saw it. I could've used my invincibility spell. I could have, like, done a lot of things better there. There's a lot of things I could have improved there. I was being very careless, and I died. Um, yeah, I restart now. I, I guess I'm just gonna restart. Boo. I mean, this is the experience of a roguelike player. You do die a lot while playing roguelikes, but it is still disappointing to die, even though you thought that you're doing very well. You lose some, you win some, I guess. You lose some, you win some. For me though, I lose most of the time. I rarely ever win. I don't think I've ever won in my life, in fact. I don't think I've ever won anything. So, for me, it's I lose some and I lose some more. But for most people, most normal people, you lose some, you win some. 
Uh, I'm just gonna go through the entire game again, because uh, basically just me doing pretty much the same thing, I think. Most of the runs are relatively similar. So I guess that is a flaw with my game, because roguelikes, typically if you want roguelike to be good, you want your runs to be different. Like each run you want to be new, fresh, and like different. But for mine, most of my runs are relatively samey, I guess. Like unless you're doing a different build, you're not gonna be playing too, too differently. But then again, I do have 18 different spells that I refuse to use for some reason. I did say this before, but for some reason I refuse to use my spells. It's not that I'm consciously saying no, it's just that I forget that they exist. Something that happens in this game is that you become kind of overpowered. Like compared to the normal enemies, you become very strong. But then you become, because of how strong you are, you become careless. And when you become careless, you die. So that is a problem that happens with me. I become super strong, I become careless, and then I become dead. That is me. So that is something that I have to learn to not do. Or else I'm going to die like a hundred more times. Literally that's me with every single run. Every single run I've done of my game, it's always, I'm careful. I get stronger, I am overpowered, I get careless, I meet a boss, I get my ass fucking whooped. That's basically me. So uh, if you do play this game someday, if anyone is going to play this game, do not be careless or else you're going to get anal fucked. Honestly, I don't know if I'm going to beat the, this game today. I know I, I, I said this earlier, but I don't actually know if I'm going to try to beat the game for this video. Because there, I might not beat this game for the video. I uh, might not beat my game for this video because I do want to let other people. Oh, whoops! I don't want to accidentally quit. I do want to let other people play and experience the, the game for themselves. If anyone is interested, that is. Like, if other people are interested, I don't want to spoil the end for anybody. I don't have like a proper ending or anything. I'm, I'm acting as if I have a proper ending, which I don't. But I do want to let people experience the game for themselves and not like spoil everything. So I might not beat the entire game. But I do want to get to the ending part where I fight planets. Because in the thumbnail of this video, you destroy planets. And that is true. You can fucking destroy planets in this game. Like you, like you become quite strong. You can destroy planets and UFOs. So I at least want to get to the part of uh, where my thumbnail, you destroy planets are. You can destroy planets. I want to at least get to the area where you fight planets, which is very cool in my opinion. I don't want to clickbait my video and not get to that one area. So I want to try to get at least to that one area. And if not, I might just cheat my way there. I might literally just turn on hacks and cheat my way to the final area where there are planets. You know what? If I die this time, if I if this is going to be my last run. If I die, I'm going to turn on cheats. I don't care if anybody calls me a cheater. I'm going to turn on cheats because I am not going to spend too long doing this because I uh, I don't want this video to drag on for like 10 million years. I do want to like make this is only like a show off video. This is just me showing off my game. So I don't want to spend an entire stream or something playing this game. I just wanted to show it off and like let people know that this game exists. So if I die this time, I'm going to turn on cheats. And then I'm going to get to the final area. And then show off myself blowing up some planets, basically. So I'm just going to go through this run, see if I die. If I don't die and I make it to the final area, that's even better. Because ideally, I don't want to die. Because I don't like dying. I want to live, you know? I want to live. Like Nico Robin once said, I want to live. Who doesn't like living, man? Who doesn't like living? Ow, God, fucking shit. I got crit again. Jesus Christ. I was not expecting that to crit. God damn it. I always get crit out at the most random of times. Maybe I should have, like, decreased the chance for getting crit. Because I might be getting crit a little bit too often. Just a little bit too often, you know? I feel like I'm getting crit a bit more times than I feel like I should have. Like, I want people to be able to get crit and die unexpectedly. 
but I don't want it to happen too often. Now, I feel like it's happened a lot during this one video already. I've only been playing for like an hour, and I've been crit like at least 20 times. Or like 10 times, uh, like a dozen times, somewhere around a dozen times. Which might be a sign that I've been crit a lot. But then again, I am playing very carelessly, so it might be my fault. Ow, shit, fuck, I got poison. Oh, that's a lot of poison, whole oh, fucking shit. The poison... Oh my god, I got 12. Oh fucking hell, that's gonna do so much damage to me. I let myself get poisoned so- I'm gonna drop down to like 0 HP. Poison does not kill you. No matter how high your poison is, the lowest it will ever drop you is 1. But poison is still very deadly. It is extremely deadly. Oh god, I have 1 HP left and I have like no healing. I'm gonna poison that guy right there. I'm just gonna let the poison do its thing, I guess. Holy fuck, I have one HP. Ah, uh, this is not, I'm gonna hide in a bush. I'm gonna hide in a bush for now and let my stuff recover. I'm gonna have to play this so carefully. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna poison it again. Uh. Oh shit, oh fucking hell. I was skipping time carelessly. I was like, I was spamming my space button and then it just moved over and killed me. And yeah, there we go. I died. I, I am going to give up now. I gave up. Uh, I'm going to turn on cheats now. Yeah, this is the moment that ev I'm pretty sure everyone's been wanting this. I'm going to turn on cheats now and uh, I'm going to speed run through my game. I'm going to speed run my fucking game. I'm going to turn on fucking cheats, man. I'm gonna turn on cheats. All right, I have turned on cheats now. Even though you probably can't tell, everything so far looks pretty normal. But I have cheats enabled. Now watch as I perform magic for you guys all to see. By pressing one singular button, all my, my HP stat goes up to fucking high heavens. I have 200 speed and I have this much attack. And now I can also see properly. This is my, I call this debugging mode. This is debugging mode. Because during my de game development period, I had a lot of issues, obviously. I had a lot of bugs and problems with my level generation. So I needed to like get through the levels fast. I had to like play through my levels fast. And I needed to test my enemy mechanics and stuff to see if they work or not. Also, uh, I'm just gonna buy out this armor because I want to show off the art for my armor. Look at this. I look cool. I look cool. Yeah. Also, another thing I want to say is the sizing proportion is very off. As you can tell from looking at my character and this guy and this enemy over here, we are completely different size proportions. The thing is, I had to make my entire game like tile based. And all the enemies had to fit inside one tile. So the scaling proportion of enemies and players and everything is not exactly good, I will say. The proportions is kind of scuffed. But it is what it is. It's not supposed to be the most, like, the most beautifully artistic game, you know? It's not supposed to be extremely realistic. Oh, oh, look at the queen. I'm gonna get revenge. I am gonna get fucking revenge. This fucking bitch ass queen one shot me last time. This time I'm gonna one shot it. There we go. I feel no satisfaction from that. I, that was not very satisfying at all. But that was revenge. That was fucking revenge. It killed me last time, so now I killed it back. All right, I got the key and I just need to find the portal. All right, moving on. This is the new area now. The area that I have not been to yet. Also gonna buy some armor to show off my uh to show off what you can get here. Yeah, this is like the demonic armor here. The demonic red armor. I think it looks very cool. And this is the guy that I was talking about earlier, the crack goblin. It can move like six times in one turn. So uh be careful because it can attack you six times in one turn. The thing about these guys is they don't do a lot of damage. They only do five damage. That's right, only five damage. Like, it's not much at all. But when they critically hit, they will do like 300 damage. So, uh, that's the mechanic, that's the gimmick with these goblins. Goblins do low damage, 
they move a lot, but when they crit, they will do a lot of damage. So be very careful. This is also the Rock Hard Golem. This Golem is kind of bricked up. He's very, very bricked up. But uh, he's no match for my 10,000 attack damage. My awesome, I'm like one punch man, man. I'm one punch man at this point. I'm literally one punch man. I can literally one shot almost every single enemy in this game. There's only one enemy in this game that won't be one shot by 10,000 damage. There's only one enemy. I won't spoil what it is, but yeah, I'm not gonna spoil it. But just know that it is quite strong. There is an enemy in this game that is very, very strong. And that is not meant to be defeated. If you meet this particular enemy, do not fight it. Run and hide. That is my advice, I'll say. There it is. Alright, welcome to the Crystal Caves. This is the Crystal Caves. It is very dangerous. These crystal- this guy over here, you see this little guy? It's a crystal fairy. He has a very high attack range. Its attack range is roughly, uh, let me check. It's... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is an attack range of 5. So, uh, be very careful. These guys can move like twice or two or three times per turn. But they have a very high, uh, very long attack range. So be very careful with them. Be very, very careful with them. And I'm not even gonna bother fighting it. Oh, this guy is the crystallized hero right here. This is not the guy that I was talking about earlier, by the way. The what, the, the enemy that I told you about earlier that will absolutely shrek you, that will absolutely murder your ass, it is not the crystallized hero. Even though the crystallized hero is quite powerful, this guy is very, very powerful as well. So be careful of him. He is beatable, but very dangerous very dangerous be careful of them uh, i need to find where the key is this area is kind of like nauseating if that's the right word nauseating it's kind of hard to see this area is the crystal area so everything is just super bright and there's crystals everywhere um normally there would be dynamic lighting there'd be a lot of shadows and stuff but since i'm using cheats there are no lights i mean there are no shadows so uh, yeah that is an advantage of using cheats and none of you guys will have cheats. I've uploaded this game onto itch.io. I do not have cheats on there. So you guys cannot access the cheats. Jesus Christ. I feel like I'm having a headache just looking at this stupid area. This area is so fucking like... It feels like I'm on an acid trip. This area looks like I'm on an acid trip. I don't know. I, I, I purposely made this area quite like hard to look at. Because the lore is that these things are supposed to be like giving like a drug like effect on you like these crystals release like powder into the air that kind of infect your mind it's purposely made to be kind of hard to look at but still it is annoying to play through this level because it's everything is just so bright and just so same colory okay this is going to be the final level of this area welcome to space get it slime in space the final level in space haha uh -huh. i'm very funny uh. also uh, if you look to your left um you can see something spinning that is a motherfucking black hole i did not know how to draw a black hole so it's not very great but this is a black hole you will want to be you want to move as quickly as possible because if you get hit by the black hole every turn your health will be divided by two regardless of your defense so if you have a thousand hp one hit will drop you down to 500 then 250 then 250 divided by two and then divide by two after that let me show you see 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 it's dropping very quickly it is dropping very quickly if not for my cheats i would be dead also this is me destroying planets there we go. I destroyed a planet, guys. I destroyed a planet. That's me destroying a planet right there. That's me destroying a planet. That's me destroying another planet. Yeah, I can destroy planets now. Yeah, this is... <laughs> I know, it's very anticlimactic. Usually, destroying a planet takes a lot more effort than one-hitting them. But since I am using cheats, I am one-shotting them. So, yeah. 
So this thing, this black hole will move even when I'm not moving. Even when you don't move, the black hole will still move. So uh, you're basically running on a time limit. You're basically playing this level with a time limit on. So yeah, you're gonna have to wanna, you're gonna wanna move as quickly as possible. I will say for this final level, the portal will always be on the farthest right. So the portal will always be in the farthest room to the right, right here. And I found the key. And uh, if I go through this portal, I will end the game, basically. There will be a kind of an ending sequence, but it's not really worth calling it an ending. But I will not go through that portal. That would be spoiler territory. I do not want to show off the ending. If you want to know the ending, you have to play it yourself. Uh, I will say that the ending will probably disappoint you. It's not a very good ending. But if you, if you are interested, if you are interested in knowing what the ending is, Go play the game yourself. Um, I will link my game in the description. If you are interested, download and play it. And uh, thank you so much for watching my video. And well, yeah, watching this video. I do appreciate it. I plan on making more games in the future. I don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know how long. I don't know where, why, how, who, what, when. But I do plan on making another game in the future. I do plan on making more roguelikes. I do plan on making 3d games 2d games 2.5d games i plan on making fourth dimensional games and fifth dim i don't know what the fuck i'm saying yeah but yeah i, I plan on making more games in the future and uh yeah uh thank you for watching this video that's about it uh, i'm peacing out bye bye everybody like and subscribe like and subscribe leave a comment this is cringe, but please do leave a like and comment and subscribe. Leave a like and comment. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.